So let's say you want to edit several areas of an image using the same module. So in this case, let's say I want to brighten up the bird, but I don't want this to be bright. So if I open up the exposure module, which we can see has already got some instances over here, we see that it's already been activated and it's already been used. Now, if we click here and click new instance, that will allow us to do something separately. So if we drop down the exposure, the exposure of the entire image will be affected. But if we take a mask, so a brush mask for instance, going to brush over this part then only this part will be affected now you can definitely see where the edges are so i'm going to blur it i'm going to feather it and i'll show you a before and after so here's the before it's very bright it catches the eye here's after it's more dark now let's say i want to brighten up this bird i can't use this one i can't make a mask put it over this bird and then change the value because this will change as well so once again go up here new instance and then what we can do is we can, let's say, paint over this bird. Now, this is just for the sake of this tutorial. Brighten this up and then again, blur and feather it. And then you see the bird being more bright than it was before. So here's a before, here's an after. Don't mind the halo. This is just for demonstration purposes. But this is how you can use a module multiple times in an image doing other things. And now it's time for the deep fuse and sharpen module. Because this module is used when you try to defuse use an image sharpen it or if you want to add in some contrast because that can be done with this module as well now let me first explain what everything is right the iterations is actually the number of times this module is multiplied onto the images and then the central radius will determine where the diffusion will start. Now the radius pan helps you spread the diffusion being used in the other speeds. So these ones. So what's important to know for you is that if you want to add haze to the image, you can use the central radius and the radius span together, which will help you maintain the edges of the image instead of losing it. Now, let me show you how that works. So I'm going to add in some iterations and we're going to increase the radius span. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to the right, the first order speed. And you see this haze appearing into the image. Now, if I reset this, and I'm going to add in the second one, you see that there's not a lot of difference between the first and second order speed. However, it becomes much more interesting when you use this one, the third order, because the edges are starting to blur. See, they are blurred right here. Now let me do that again with the first one. They are pretty sharp over here. So let me double click to reset that. And then the fourth order speed, will have the same effect, it will blur the edges as well. Now, the other way around is to sharpen it. So the diffusion part is on the right side and then the sharpen part is on the left side. Now, if we go to the direction, we see order anisotropy. And these order anisotropy are connected to these ones. So every order has its own order anisotropy as well. Now, make sure you add in some iterations. Make sure you add in the radius pan. And then let's pull this order speed all the way to the right now when you have the first order anisotropy i hope i say that correctly though on zero that means that you will have diffusions all the way so you will have them to the sides and you will have them up and down but if you change this and move it to the right you see the image changing and we see less diffusion here because the edges are starting to appear again so on these four sides but it's starting to move with the shape that we have right here. So it's over here, it's over there. And it basically means that you still see diffusion above and under, right? So if we double click this and reset it and then drag it to the left, we see that the diffusion is going more to the left and right. Now, if you want to sharpen it or sharpen your image, you have these iterations as well, but you'll have to use the left side rather than the right side. Now, if you move the first order to the left, this will add in more contrast into the image. So I'm going to start by adding in some iterations and I'm going to increase the radius span. And now if I move this to the left, you see more contrast being added to this image. Now the same goes if I move the second order speed, more contrast will be added to this image as well. And moving the third order speed to the left will add in some more sharpening. Now this looks horrible, but you can actually counteract that by increasing the edge sensitivity and increasing the edge threshold. You now see the banding that we saw a minute ago disappear, right? And then if I show you before and after, so here's a before, so it's, it's 
it's not really sharp and then here's an after which is much more sharp so once again here's a before here's an after and the same goes for the fourth order speed which is the sharpening as well you can counteract the banding by increasing the edge sensitivity increasing the edge threshold and then you have the edge management sharpness slider as well which will diffuse it or which will sharpen it even more so that's another way how you can tweak the sharpness of your image right so now it's time to show you how to go from this to this using the color correction module so let's search for that one color correction here we go let's activate it now what's good to know is that the white point is influencing the highlights and the black point is influencing the shadows Okay, let me reset that real quick. Before I'm going to add anything to this image, I'm going to add in a parametric mask. I'm going to scroll down, put it on you, and then we're going to find where these colors in the spectrum are. So I'm going to use this color picker. Here's a box, and it shows me that the colors are over here. Now, if you want to see the mask, click this symbol, and now you can use these sliders to tweak it as much as possible to get the best results possible. Now know that the top one is basically like the baseline and then the bottom line is like the feathering of that mask. And I'm also going to feather it here and I'm going to blur it here and just try to get the best results possible by moving the sliders around before you start to edit anything in the image. Right, I'm going to deselect the mask and I'm going to push the highlights into the greens so that the trees become more green. And I'm actually going to do the same thing with the shadows in this image. And there you go. Now let me show you before and after. So here's a before, it's very dull. It doesn't look quite good. And now if I activate it, everything looks a lot more vibrant and colorful. And that really brings your image to life. Right, so you need the retouch module and this is her original face. Now let's change it. So first let's add in some wavelet layers. I'm going to use a scale of six and I don't see anything just yet, but that's because we need to select this symbol as well. And then if we click the last one, this is what we see. Right, you can work from left to right or from right to left. I didn't see any different differences in the result so for this case I'm just going to work from left to right and before you work on every layer so this uh, these are all different layers make sure to always click this one auto levels and if you don't see any details you need to zoom in and then it becomes more refined so we don't see anything in this layer so let's go to the next layer here I see the first spot so I'm going to start working on this layer and then move all the way upwards if you've edited the layer so let's say I'm going to use this circle I'm going to place it over this spot and then grab a donor area you will see an orange line appear and that means that this layer has been worked on these layers haven't been worked on because they don't have an orange line just yet and the number of layers decide how many details you can work on so like I said this is very core this is very refined and we're going to use the heal tool rather than the clone tool or the fill tool or the blur tool you could use the blur tool on this blurry layer so that's the last layer because that contains all the low frequencies remaining from extracting all the other layers and when is this useful well let's say you want to correct discoloration of the skin red patches on the cheeks or other stuff uh, darker things under the eyes which i have a lot then this is something you can use to work in those problematic areas uh, for now we're going to use the heal tool only because that will generate the best results in my opinion so i'm going to select this layer let's see if we see another blemish if you want to move the image around just click in it and move it around another thing you should know is that you can click a circle for instance and then you see that plus sign and that plus sign is the donor area now if you want to have that somewhere else hold shift click somewhere move your mouse and then click here for instance and you see that this is the donor area being used over there i don't really like that because i like to have the donor areas close to the area that i'm actually editing on so that we don't see any differences because let's say here's where the light is so this is a very bright part if you use it over here that doesn't look good right click the circle again we still see the plus sign far away so i'm just going to click it in the circle going to move it next to it click again and then that will be my donor area right let's continue doing this for all the spots that i see so i see some here and i see some here and then we're going to move on to the next layer and then another way how to do that is to just click and then hold it and you can drag it anywhere you like so i'm going to drag it here i see a spot over here as well and i see some spots here as well so i'm going to continue doing this and then move on to the next layer then on the next layer we see more details and i'm going to grab the circle again and i'm going to do the same thing repeat the same thing and what's good to know is that 
let's say you've done that and you still see something. You can use another one and then grab a different donor area and then it will be added again. And that means the blemishes will be less visible. And the final thing I want to mention is that let's say in the previous layer I've used this donor area. Then in this layer I can use a different donor area which will make the skin blend in the best way possible. Now if you want to increase the size you can just scroll away from you or towards you and that will decrease the size of the mask. And if you want to change the feathering just hold shift and scroll towards you or away from you to make the feathering even bigger. And I'm going to work through all the layers and then show you the end result. And then here is the end result. Now you can still tweak it if you want to you still see something over here but personally this is part of the girl right so i don't like getting rid of everything it needs to be natural as well i'm going to show you the original version so here's the original version and then here's the edited version and that looks much much better the first way is by using the monochrome module you can decrease the filter size as you should and then move it across the hue palette to find the best filter value for your desired image rendition and then once you found it you need to gradually expand the filter to include more hues and achieve a more natural tonality now a better way to create a black and white image is to use the color calibration module and go to the gray tab and go to this setting right here the preset setting because this module has one two three four five six presets so the fuji across 100 turns it into a black and white straight away we've got the delta 100 from ilford we've got the ilford delta 400 3200 we've got the fp4 plus we've got the hp5 plus and then finally we've got the black and white luminance based one and if you don't like to use presets just reset it go to the gray tab and just move the r the g and the b around now please know that if you're working with skin tones if you make this more dominant you will get more smooth skin tones if you make the green more dominant you will get more detail in your skin tones and the blue one is used to reduce or to avoid emphasizing a wanted skin textures then the next one is the color contrast activate it just move this to the left move this to the left you've got a black and white image and then the final one is using the color balance rgb module and i'm going to create a new instance because i've used this one before i started this tutorial so now i've got a new instance and we're going to the perceptual saturation grading, global saturation, drag that to the left. And here we go. We've got another black and white image. So this photo turned into this. And in the film strip, you see similar like photos, which could use the same edits. Now, rather than doing everything from scratch again, we can save this as a preset. Go up here beneath the history stack and then create a new style. Let's call this bird photography. And now I can choose what I want to save. So I can save the denoise one. I can save the tone equalizer, local contrast, and basically all the modules that have been used before. I'm going to use the exposure as well. And what's good to know is that these three have a mask, right? Now the position of this bird isn't the same in all the photos. So we would have to look at that, but everything else can be used. Now click save. And then if we move on to the next photo in the film strip, which is this one, we can apply the same preset by going down here and then click bird photography and boom. There you have it. The same effects have been applied. Now, obviously it needs some tweaking, but it will take me far less time than doing everything from scratch again. Look, you need the export module because you're done editing your images and you now want to enjoy them or show them around other than here in Darktable. Right. You can select the target storage, file on disk, send this email, website gallery, or other options. And then by default, it will store this file in the folder where you've retrieved these images from. You can give it a unique file name and also what you want Darktable to do when you run into a conflict. So you can create unique file names, overwrite, overwrite if changed or skip. Then you've got several options for the file format. So we've got JPEG, JPEG 2000, PDF, PNG, TIFF. It's recommendable that when you want to edit this image in GIMP or any other program uh, that you select TIFF because that way the most details will be stored and you'll work with the image as close as original as possible. And you can also change the quality of the image and as a general benchmark, 90% JPEG quality gives a very high quality image while gaining a significant reduction on the original 100% file size. Uh, personally, I always leave it at 95% because that's 
default and I like default values in a program. And once you've made up your mind about this, it's important to make sure that the profile is set to sRGB so that it's web safe because if you export it and you don't have it set to sRGB, the colors might look different. You can apply a style if you've saved one. So if I've saved the style of bird, so I can select bird and it will be automatically applied. And then you can hit export and your image will be exported. Now, another way to do this is to go back to the dark room and you'll have all the options on the left hand menu over here, export with the same values and the same results. You can click export here and your image will be exported as well. 